Okay, now the patient has tracheostomy tube, he's in ICU stable, no problem. Usually, as we said, the most common indication is prolonged mechanical ventilation. Once the patient has tracheostomy and he's in stable condition and no problem, the PIC tube is functioning, we start talking to family about placement. We usually prefer to move them out of ICU to something called LTAC, which is an abbreviation of long-term assisted care hospitals. These are hospitals similar to any hospital except that they are dedicated for patients who need long-term hospital stay, including those with a tracheostomy who needs, who we anticipate they will need slow weaning process three, four, five weeks. So for those who's from outside United States, these hospital, I don't know if they will exist in your country, but called LTAC hospitals. So the average hospital stays are 25 days. Again, you have to get insurance approval for their transfer. These hospital, they are different from regular hospital. They don't have ER, but they can manage a lot of stuff. They, ha they can have mechanical ventilation, give IV infusions, and nutrition. And they're pretty skillful, actually. They, I feel they are better than the ICU staff in managing these people. ICU staff mainly for very sick people. But we assume these people are stable now to go to LTAC. So that's the first thing. Also, there is something called routine tube placement. Tracheostomy tube placement. Usually, the first change of the tube or placement should happen one to two weeks after placement and then after this first change is one to three months we change and usually respiratory therapists are the one who replace those most of the time now sometimes we need to change the tube for other condition one of them patient discomfort maybe the tube is too big for this patients and then we'll change it so that's one Thing. Sometimes patient vent ventilator asynchrony. This could be also related to the imp improper uh, tracheostomy tube size. So we change it will solve problem. Also, if there is cuff leak problem, sometimes changing the tube to a proper size will fix the problem. Fracture of the tube or the flange also require replacement uh, of the tube so these are possible issues also we need to replace the tube trick is the tube sooner than waiting for the one two three months every one or three months or every three months after the first change or replacement every one to two in the first one or two or, or two weeks now once they in LTAC I don't think you will encounter this if you are just doing IC rotation but let's say you're doing a rotation in LTAC Let's say the patient was successfully weaned off mechanical ventilation. Now he's breathing just with uh, room air or very few nasal uh, oxygen amount via nasal cannula. Now we need to wean him. Oh, this is what we call decannulation, which basically the process that we decide the patient is ready to have the tracheostomy tube out. Tracheostomy tube out so that what decannulation means there is two ways to do that the first one is basically by progressively decreasing the size of the tube let's say it's size 7 go to size 6 then and make sure the patient's tolerating that and then if everything okay then we know the patient is ready, right? The other way that we use it more commonly, which is a progressive capping trial or increasing increasing cap trial. What we do exactly, we have a cap, we put it on the tracheostomy tube, close it, which means that we'll close it, and that means the patient, as if he doesn't have it, and will breathe from his mouth. We put it for 12 hours first, and then open it if the patient tolerating that next day we put it for let's say 24 hours the same thing we go to 48 hours if the patient is tolerating 48 hours of capping then that means 
he is ready capping mean closing the tracheostomy tube now if the patient passed these whether we're doing this decrease in size or capping which what we use more then is the patient stable from hemodynamic uh, point of view oxygenation wise is there no upper airway obstruction that's very important is the patient having strong cough and able to clear secretions if yes then it's time to decannulate time to we remove the tracheostomy tube and then we have to decide do we need to keep the stoma open or not if the patient is good and all these with all these means then no just leave it and the stoma will close in a few days maybe a week on its own if we need to keep the stoma open let's say the patient has still a lot of secretions and we're not sure he may need it again you can just put a plug into the uh, stoma with a speaking valve to keep it open until we make sure he doesn't need it so that way you keep the stomach open not allow it to close of course during this decannulation process the patient will be followed by physical therapy occupation therapy and speech therapy he can talk using a speaking valve which is a device they put it into the tracheostomy tube allow the patient to talk also the patient can start eating there is no problem uh, with eating while you have a tracheostomy tube you still can do that after you pass your swallow evaluation so that's how really the process of prolonged mechanical ventilation placing a tracheostomy making sure they're stable moving them to altac and then allow them to be weaned completely of mechanical ventilations and then start the process of decannulation and that easily takes 25 days in altac thanks for watching this video please subscribe to our channel and activate the notification bell so you get to see the videos as soon as they are released glad to have you on board